get her done with Ronnie. Today we're going to talk about these things called tools. Now, tools have many different meanings, but what I'm going to teach you today are something that you would find in a hardware store, mainly. Um, these are things to help you if something is broken or if you need to build something, if you want to build something in your house, if you want to tear down a wall and put up a new wall. Maybe you just want to change the color of your room. Maybe you just want to paint your room. So I'm going to help you go through some vocabulary about tools. Oh, I can't resist the drill sound. It's like going to the dentist. This is not the dentist. So, as I told you, um, the beginning of the lesson said, get her done. Why is Ronnie speaking in a strange Alabamian accent from America? It's a joke. Um, get her done is an expression that people use to mean, go do something. Do it well. Get her done. It sounds very American, so yay, get her done. We've picked it up in Canada. Maybe you will hear people say it when they're drinking, get her done. I don't know. We are crazy here, all of us. Um, the most common kind of tool that people use will be something like this. Um, this is a hammer. <laughs> Makes that kind of noise. Um, this is actually a rubber mallet. But Ronnie doesn't have a lot of supplies. She makes do with what she has. So a rubber mallet or a hammer is for something like a nail. So a nail looks like this. And what you do is you, tunk, 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 you hammer the nail into something. Be careful you don't hammer your thumb. I've done this before. What you, ah! Hammering the thumb is very painful. Um, hammer is a noun and also a verb, okay? So I can say, I hammer in the nails. So I take my hammer and I smash the nails into my wrist. Not a good idea. Please be careful when you're using these things. They just might bonk you in the head. The next one we have is, it's not a drink of vodka and orange juice, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. It is a screwdriver. Now, my screwdriver was very expensive. I did get it from the dollar store, which is another place where you can get these tools. Um, each screwdriver has a different head. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, unfortunately, I do not know the names of the different heads of the screwdriver. I do know that this one is called a flat head because it's flat. And I do believe that the one that looks like a star is called a Phillips. But don't quote me on that because I just kind of guess and hope that they fit in. And if all else fails, just hammer it in. That's the thing. So with a screwdriver, what you're going to do is you're going to take this thing called a screw. <gasps> that also means something different. So you're going to screw in the screw with a screwdriver. English is so repetitive. Okay, so one more time. So you're going to screw in the screw with a screwdriver. This one you have to twist a lot. It hurts your wrist. If you screw too much, you can hurt your wrist and do other things. Um, the next one we have is a wrench. A wrench could look like this. This is a very big example of a wrench. Um, I also have a tiny wrench. So this part, what's going to happen is you're going to take something like this. Now, this, I believe, is called a bolt, okay? So we have these things called nuts and bolt. I know what you're thinking about nuts, not those kind. 
Nuts are something that go around the bolt and they position the nuts and the bolt so it doesn't move. So what's going to happen is I'm going to use my wrench and I'm going to put the bolt or screw the bolt into the wall. Or I can unscrew the bolt and I can take it off. Um, if you have a bicycle, I have a bicycle, I love my bicycle. Sometimes you need to do repairs on your bicycle. Sometimes you can use a wrench. Also at the other end of the wrench, there's a hacksaw, not a hacksaw, I'm sorry, a hex. And you can crank it and take it off. Um, one thing that would have been useful a couple of weeks ago when my friend's chain fell off and we had to change a tire would have been one of these. This is called an Allen key or hex key. So this basically fits in the point of something and turns it. So if you have a bicycle, this is a very important tool. Ronnie needs to bring this with her every day because Ronnie's a bit of a klutz. That means she breaks things a lot. So an Allen key will help you undo things. Um, we also have this word pliers. These are pliers. I have a story about pliers. I was a wee girl. I think I was probably maybe five years old. My front tooth was wiggly. That means it was ready to come out. So it would not fall out. So my mother did what she knows to do. She took a string and tied it around my tooth, tied the other part of the string to a door and slammed the door. My tooth didn't come out. So here I was with one wiggly tooth. Well, my father, he's quite smart. He took a nice set of pliers. He put a Kleenex or a tissue here, and he just gently yanked my tooth out. So I was left with one front tooth missing. True story. Pliers are not recommended for yanking out teeth. Don't do that, unless you want to. Pliers are good for things like a nail that you can't get out of the wall. You could pull it out. It's basically used for pulling things out. Again, not teeth. Shouldn't have told you that story. So let's say that I have a nail in the wall that won't come out. I can put the pliers here and pull it out. Yay, success. What else do we have here? This thing. One of my favorites. This is a drill. The purpose of a drill and the all important drill bit, this will go in here. I'm not going to turn it on with this because it will fly in my eye. A drill is something that's going to make a hole in the wall. So, drill is the machine like this, and the drill bit is the actual thing that's going to make a hole. So, the drill bit attaches to the drill, and this is used to make a hole. Okay? Pliers, I told you, is used to pull things out of the wall, not your mouth, and an Allen key or a hex key. Um, it's really good if you have a bicycle or if you have to undo something or take something apart. Um, hammer, you can put things up with a hammer or you can screw something into the wall. And a wrench, again, is for fastening things. Fascinating, I know. Let's get back to some uh, home decorating, woo! Let's let the dust fly. So this thing, this beautiful thing, it's called a paintbrush, two-piece brush set right there. So if I wanted to paint the whiteboard, I could change the color of it. One thing to be careful about is this is not for your hair or your face, okay? It's usually only for the wall. Sometimes you have a large wall that you want to paint. This could take hours. Oh, what, what? We have this thing. Um, it's missing one thing, but this is called a roller brush right here. So this is a paintbrush, and this is a roller or a roller brush. brush. You get a spongy bit around here, you dip it in the paint, and then you roll it. Woo! Woo! Rolling, rolling, rolling. It covers more area than this. 
So this would paint this much, and this would paint this much. These are fun. These are really fun. I suggest you go and buy one of these and just paint your house. Go do it now. Um, if you are building something, or like I said, you knocked down the wall, you want to make sure that what you've done is level or straight. So you want something to be like this, not like this. This beautiful piece of equipment or this tool is called a level. I don't know if you can see, but in the middle of this, there's a bubble. And the way that you line this up is if the bubble is in between the two lines here, it means your piece of equipment is level. <gasps> oh, we're level, we're level, we're level at Ingvid. So I may not be level, I may be a bit off the wall. If you need help fixing something, I suggest you call in a professional. If you want to give it a try yourself, good luck, be safe. Go to the hardware store, go to the dollar store, and sometimes at the supermarket, you can find all of these tools. One thing that's one of my favorite ones too is a measuring tape. It looks like this. So you can measure things. You can measure anything you want. The possibilities are endless out there, ladies and gentlemen. So let's say that something was um, six inches. You could measure that. Maybe something is seven or eight inches. You could measure that. Anything that has a length or a width, you can measure. In Canada, we usually measure things in feet. Um, there's different levels on this. It has feet and inches. Sometimes they have centimeters. Sometimes they have millimeters. It depends on what you use in your country. So, homework. Everyone measure something. Write me in the comments and tell me how long it is. Goodbye.